is Joe Kyle. I am from Aspen, Colorado, and I am currently sitting on the stoop of my van in Durango, Texas, uh, in search of, well, now very elusive dark skies, uh, dark and clear skies. And right now, this is basically the be best place to see them. So I moved to Aspen uh, a couple years ago from basically living everywhere else in the country, you know, from Florida to New York to California, very densely populated areas. And the first time I was in Aspen uh, out camping, I saw the night sky in a non-light polluted area for the first time. And I love photography, so instantly my first uh, instinct was to take out my camera and try to take a picture of it. And uh, as I'm sure anybody else who's tried that knows, it, it goes very poorly the first time. Uh, so I started to do some research and figured out, you know, what kinds of things I needed to do, what kind of equipment I should have to be able to take, you know, good skies, uh, good photos of the night sky. And middle, 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 uh, I'm down here with, you know, a ton of complicated equipment. <laughs> trying to uh, image a very particular portion of the night sky that's, that's very small in terms of its angular size in the sky. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically the story. So this is my imaging setup here. And if I can go the right way. I don't know how much you can see, but this portion down here is an equatorial mountain. It's basically a large mechanical device that compensates for the rotation of the earth. Uh, it has to do so very precisely because you're talking about keeping the section of the sky attached to a pixel on the camera uh, for extended periods of time and that's, that's a lot of precision and uh, it has some things to help it do that. This, this camera down here provides feedback to the mount to be able to make corrections as it goes. This telescope is not one that you'd sort of see uh, I don't know if anybody sees a telescope normally these days, but most people think of a telescope as something you look through in the back. Um, this one is its an astrograph. It's intended only for photography. There's nowhere you can look through it, and that's why the camera is actually mounted to the front here. So light goes into the telescope. It bounces off of a large mirror in the back and then goes into the, the camera on the front. So that's the gist without getting into too many particulars. Everything is hooked up in a manner that allows me to sort of manage everything remotely or semi-remotely so my van is parked out that way and I, I have it's it's not a true live view like you'd see on the back of a video camera but uh, I, I have all the information I need to be able to monitor what's going on and, and you know sort of see the data as it comes in throughout the course of the night. So I, I am working on a, an extended project. It is a, a six-panel mosaic uh, of an area of the Orion constellation where you find uh, things like the Horsehead Nebula. It's, it's basically a factory for stars where you have a lot of ne nebulosity and dust clouds that are uh, creation of lending themselves to the creation of, of new matter. Aesthetically, it's a very um, interesting region, and that's why I'm targeting it specifically. I've been engaged in photography generally for a little over 10 years. Uh, astrophotography specifically, uh, I would say about three. Well, you got all the stuff, that's for sure. Yeah. Did you is... start with something smaller than this originally? Yeah, so I, I started with uh, a much less complicated version of this particular equatorial mount, which... Uh, so this, this rotates in two axes. You have right ascension and de declination, and those are sort of your celestial coordinate system. Uh, being able to track in two axes allows you to point to things in the sky. Um, if you had this uh, as a right ascension only mount, which it would move this way only, Right. they make miniaturized versions of those, and that's, that's what I started out with. That's what I would recommend everybody starts out with because it, it allows you to compensate for rotation. It doesn't give you the level of control that this does, but right. you can take some really awesome wide field <clears throat> shots. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's how I got into it. The tiers of imaging mounts at the bottom end, you know, for hobbyists, which is what I, I started out as, <clears throat> you have those right ascension only trackers. Right. Um, and those are, you know, you can get one of those for three, four hundred bucks. It's right. Not, it's not outrageous. Uh, 
then you get up into the equatorial mounts uh -huh. where it's it's really just all mechanical so it's it's down to the level of precision you can get on sort of a mass uh produced machined part so the right. worm, worm gear is being driven by a motor and that turns another gear this is sort of on the third tier up which not only has the mechanical components but it has optical encoders that allow the mount to know where it is uh, and that optical encoder um, gives the mount a lot of extra precision it, it can compensate in real time for right. mechanical deficiencies huh. and that that sort of doubles the price triples the price it's it starts to get crazy fast yeah and this so the, the mount is on right now it, it doesn't seem like it's moving but it is tracking it is compensating for the rotation of the earth so if you were to sit here and watch it, it would move very slowly. Right. Well, you know, it's crazy because the Earth is rotating at a thousand miles an hour on the equator. And then the Earth is going around the sun at, what, like 60,000 miles an hour? I think it's like 40 kilometers a second. Uh, I don't know the math as to how that goes up. And but... then the sun is moving through the Milky Way at 537 thousand miles an hour yeah and then the universe is is expanding at some like bizarre speed yeah so you know i asked uh, i asked a astronomy guy once so how fast am i really moving and he said well it's all relative right and that's a whole relativity thing just pisses me off so uh, the, like... the other thing that will piss you off if you haven't heard it before is the big bang if you yeah. ask somebody if you ask a, a cosmologist where the big bang happened right it happened everywhere right exactly <laughs> yeah there's not everywhere a spot is the center of it's the big not bang. a spot that just it just was everything was there and all of a sudden it just all started moving yeah and it's it's crazy traffic yeah now i get road rage if i come to the highway and i have to wait for one car to go by <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative yeah exactly